everyone. Um, I'm Churing Omobutia, and I'm a farmer and a general secretary of Farmer Produce Organization here in Sikkim. Um, I belong to the first and only organic state of India, Sikkim. So Sikkim, it is located on the northeast part of the country, and it is surrounded by three major international uh, borders, like Nepal, China, and Bhutan. So today we are here to discuss a few pointers that elaborate the work that we are doing and uh, we are we hope to continue you know in future uh, firstly we would like to introduce the story of how the state incorporated organic farming into mainstream agriculture and became fully organic state uh, later on i will introduce you with my uh, colleague mr karma and mr Kishore, they, uh, they will elaborate on a few points that uh, I'll introduce you now. First thing uh, that I would like to say is, uh, people of Sikkim, we have understood the power of food and its ability to create identity for our homeland. When we talk about spices, India is sure to pop in the globe. When we say jalapenos, we think of uh, Mexico, of course. So same like that, um so so right now i think i'm in right now okay hello everyone um i'm churing omobutia and um, i'm a farmer i'm general secretary of farmer produce organization here in sikkim and um, let me introduce sikkim first it's a very very tiny state its uh, area measures not more than seven thousand square kilometers and it is nestled between three major international um, countries like China, Nepal, and Bhutan. Uh, so today we are here to share our story, this tiny state of Sikkim, how it became fully organic state and became landmark for the whole world. Uh, later on, I will uh, introduce my uh, colleague, Mr. Kishore and Mr. Karma. They will elaborate in detail. And if you have any queries, of course, you can ask. So the first, we would like to introduce the story of how the state incorporated organic farming into mainstream agriculture and became fully recognized organic state. We have understood. Uh, the power of food and its ability to create identity for a to pop everybody's mind, you know, and when you talk about jalapenos, of course, you think about Mexico. So similarly, we have like um, Sikkim's large cardamom, which is very famous, and also Sikkim men. Similarly, we have plants that we would like to uh, promote and uh, introduce to the whole world. Sharing, oh, it looks see, like uh, how it goes, uh, and also uh, there are other points that uh, we think sharing, for our it, farming uh, future or farming uh, farmers. That is like uh, we, we're we're losing the you greatest uh, fear ah. that we have right now, even in seeking or all over the world. <laughs> that is to attract new farming profession because it's not just a profession; uh, it's a uh, how to say uh, by producing food. You are not only uh, giving food to people or receiving money from it, you are contributing mm -hmm. towards the nature and also <coughs> towards the society. So it's a, it's kind of a uh, uh, social work in a way. And also, uh, I would say that uh, job. So my uh, Mr. Kishore will uh, explain you uh, more about uh, how to say. Uh, no, no, not Mr. Kishore, but Mr. Karma will explain to you how we try, try to um, attract new generation people into this profession. And also Mr. Kishore will explain to you about um, how we are trying to use fellow land, you know, and converting them into uh, retained farm on them. So I would like to introduce Mr. Karma first, and uh, he will share his side of the story of how Sikkim became organic. Thank you.
Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Karma Jitin Bhutia. I am an organic farmer from Sikkim. I have been doing farming since last 21 through organic farming. I am serving the mother earth. Success story of organic farming uh, in Sikkim is not a story achieved overnight. It took us 13 long years. It started years 2003. By the banning of input of chemical fertilizer, inorganic pesticides, and other inorganic agriculture inputs, in the 2010, The mission by the name of Sikkim Organic Mission. This mission aim organic farming and in the month of January 2016, the Prime Minister of India visited Sikkim and declare Sikkim as a fully organic. These years, the process like testing certificate by the approved certifying agencies to this. I am personally am doing farming of paddy, fruit, spices, and vegetables. Sikkim is a hilly region. So we farmer have to face many problems, different kind of natural calamity, finding market for the farmers of remote areas. So it is a big challenge for us to attract young generation in the farming professional. We are trying to working on this issue by providing training of small tiller machine, micro processing units, Merging modern technology and traditional farm exposure trips and many others difference of pre and post harvesting training through agriculture university of Sikkim. University and different government departments in the past few years we have seen especially also wife adding an extra income to their existing source I Friends, here 
our field. Thank you. And it was a pleasure sharing our journey with you all. Namaste. Um, so that was Mr. Karma, and um, he was awarded many times like uh, by the state government and uh, many prestigious awards he had won. Even on BBC, uh, his story was covered uh, on this topic, uh, organic seeking, and uh, farmers from all over the world comes and visit him to learn how the organic traditional farming is done. Besides that, he also gives training how to make uh, uh, organic pesticides, organic fungicide, organic uh, manures, and all. So next, I would like to introduce um, my friend, uh, Mr. Kishore, and he will show you the uh, story um, about his um, uh, how he entered organic farming and what he's doing at present. Thank you. Hello everyone. Very good uh, from the organic uh, farmers team of Sikkim. I'm Kishore Sharma, an organic farmer based at uh, Sikkim. I've been uh, doing organic farming since the year 2008-9. Earlier, I used to be a banker since I I used to be fascinated by the term itself, the organic farming. I left my job and uh, entered the field uh, and opened by the state government. Then the uh, state government provided huge opportunities to young folks as well as uh, the traditional of as on day, if somebody asks me whether I'm happy being an or organic uh, farmer, I'd like to let the world know that I am absolutely happy to do organic farming. Now, when it comes to the story of organic farming in Sikkim, it's been talked over not only in Sikkim, not only at the national level, but it's very well known at the world level forums. Now, the world might be getting amazed as to how in an overnight like uh, setup, the name of uh, Sikkim started uh, uh, flying so high because of a single thing called farming. Now, as my friend earlier explained that it's not a story which uh, turned the fate of Sikkim overnight. Our people, our farmers, the government, everyone concerned, all the stakeholders had been struggling since only by the year 2016, the state was declared fully. So I wanted to uh, let the world know that it doesn't happen. Any success doesn't come overnight. The farmers of Sikkim, if we look at their history, if we look at the history of farming in Sikkim, you will come to know that Sikkim was traditionally organic farming land. My forefathers, they did organic farming. They were into traditional farming. My uh, um, During the Green Revolution time, there was introduction of inorganic uh, manures, inorganic pesticides for a couple of years. By the year 2003, the government of Sikkim, as well as the people, failed. It's to be continuing with inorganic farming since harmful only was devastating into the environment. The Water resources, the land, I mean, to the soil. So it was a very judicious move by the then government of Sikkim 
as well as the farming learns to go with uh, organic farming. In the year 2010, with the efforts from the farming community, with the efforts from the local government, a total area of 58,168 hectares were targeted for conversion into organic feeds. The efforts continued by the year 2015-16. A total of 74,000 hectares of land were converted into organic farming lands, thus declaring the state as a fully organic farming state. The benefits of organic farming are huge. It ensures long-term sustenance of soil fertility. It is very much important. In fact, it's so important for protection of environment and ecology. It not only gives healthy living, but it also decreases the risk of health ailments. We can see at the present world that the world is getting uh, plagued with uh, so much of life-threatening diseases. I don't know if I will be wrong to quote the pandemic, the ongoing pandemic of COVID. I somewhere, somehow I feel there is a link, there is a very big link between the ongoing pandemic and the environmental setup human beings, we as human beings have created. Therefore, it needs no acceleration to mention the benefits of organic farming. Now, coming to what am I doing as an organic farmer today? I'd like to quote few of the areas where I'm working in. Number one, conservation of local seeds. Now, organic farming, as per my feeling, and I often say, it uh, starts with cows. Because for me personally, if somebody asks me, what is the basic of uh, organic farming? I would say very confidently, I would say it's cow. Cow provides not only milk, but the manuring part. When it comes to manuring in organic farming, it's very, very important. Farmers are often confused to make a shift. Like till yesterday, I was using these that say urea or DAP and the like uh, fertilizers. The farmer has to make a paradigm shift when he's shifting from inorganic to organic farm. I found cow dung best manure to come very handy when we make a shift. Along with cow dung manure, there are other manures like vermicompost, compost manures for fertilization of your soil to keep your soil healthy. Next is when it comes to pesticides. Again, the farmer is at confused. Till yesterday, I was using this or that chemical. What am I going to use? There are options now, like biopesticides are there. There are certain organisms which help us control pests and diseases. There are methods. The world has developed the methods. And in this also, I, I, I can proudly say that my state, Sikkim, has shown a way to the world, to the entire world. And I feel very proud, very happy that I, as a farmer, am getting this opportunity to represent my state at the world level. This forum, forum I'm talking now, is a world level forum, and 
a man, an organic farmer from a small hilly state like Sikkim of India is speaking in this forum. And that has happened only because of one and one thing that is organic farming. Now, as an old organic farming farmer, I am concentrating presently on a couple of things. One is seed, and other one is conversion of fallow lands. Why seeds? Now, after taking care of your uh, care of your soil, after taking care of your uh, manures, after taking care of pest pesticides. The next important thing in organic farm is seeds. It plays a very vital role. You see, you are doing organic farming, you are using organic manure, you are using biopesticides and organic uh, pesticides for controlling diseases and pesticides. Now, until and unless you have well-certified organic seeds, it doesn't make telling that we are fully organic. So one of the area where I uh, found we were missing something was seeds. So I started with conservation of local seeds and local zamplasms because local seeds and zamplasms, what I have found personally is they are mostly disease resistant. They are resistant to many of the pests. Why? Because they have been granted that immunity by nature. They made their origin in my field. They grew up here, often fighting with many of the diseases, uh, pests, flies and all. So they have, uh, you know, in a sense, they gained some sort of immunity fight against pests and diseases. And I personally use my own seeds. The next uh, big advantage of a uh, seed bank or conservation or preservation of your own seed is you know what you are using. Once you know what type of seed you are using, what manure you are using in your fields, what type of pesticides you are using in the field, you can get 100% confident what you are eating. The society at the world level is market best. Things are very neatly packed, well labeled, and to the market. But we don't know as a consumer, we don't know where it has come from how it was grown, how it was processed, how it was packed. And I literally feel, often I feel, what I get in the market is, I'm sorry to uh, say, but a pack of uh, sick type of things. So here, the organic farming guarantees health that way by knowing what you are cultivating, by knowing how you are processing it, by knowing how you are packing it, by knowing what are the ingredients, what elements are contained in the things you are eating. That way you are safe. Next area where I've been focusing is conversion of fallow lands. If we look around, we'll find millions of factors of fallow lands. Let me insert a small uh, thing here. There's a difference uh, between, often people get confused uh, between fallow land and barren land. Barren lands means those lands which are uncultivable. Now, fallow land, it means the land which was being cultivated till yesterday, till day before yesterday or till recent years. And now, because of certain reasons, the land stopped being cultivated. The farmer stopped uh, cultivating in that particular land. And that has been lying idle. So 
So my thinking is, when the land resources lie idle, a lot of loss is being made into the state or the national GDP. You have the resources lying idle. You are not doing how I am uh, uh, teaching my people is use the land resources which are lying idle and contribute to the GDP, the gross domestic pro uh, product of the nation. I don't know if um, uh, uh, when I say that the land which was uh, ideally yesterday is being cultivated today directly hits your gross domestic product at the national level. And uh, in a tiny state like mine, it contributes to the state gross domestic product, which we call SGDP in Seoul. And the fellow land somehow has blocked Hi, everybody. So sorry for the interruption. It looks like we've just lost uh, the feed from them. So just give us a moment and we'll try and get that back on. Uh, thanks for your patience, everyone. And it looks like we've got them back. So that was a that was a quick one. Uh, over to you guys. So now I am guiding farmers. I am training them, and uh, we have uh, you know made uh, a shift from from not only cultivation of uh, traditional grains, vegetables, and other things. Now we have uh, made a gradual shift to cultivation of uh, new plants like aromatic plants wherein we are cultivating things like lemongrass, German chamomile, roselle hibiscus, vetiver, patchouli, these type of uh, things, which in a way goes to add to the income of um, the farmers. These plants, these crops are also easy to cultivate. They, less, they require less care and attention at the farmer level. Like when you are cultivating lemongrass, I have found that's the best way to cultivate your land from fallow to income generating uh, land resources. Similarly, farmers can try out with uh, things like chamomile, vetiver, patchouli, and all. These are generally weeds which are which uh, can grow even in wider regions. It uh, therefore saves a lo lot of costs in terms of labor. At present, with the help of the government, we have started a mission of processing uh, at the village level, at the farmer level. Like we have installed distillation units whereby we can process crops like lemon grass, chamomile, patchouli, vetiver, etc., and get essential oils. You might be surprised that Sikkim has also taught the Indian Union how to produce organic essential oils. Tomorrow, if everything goes the way I think, the way I plan, I might be able to give to the world the organic perfume produced in Sikkim. And uh, that would be a way of great success to small time farmers like me. Small time farmers in the sense in Sikkim, we have farmers with small land holdings. Often, farmers hold uh, land less than an acre. In that sense, I call my farmers small-time farmers. Now, that was another part of 
my mission which i am undertaking at present i am happy to share to at this forum that i have very young farmers with me who are working in the field uh, with me every day maybe i can i wanted to share pictures here See, screen is there. Yeah, you can uh, see some of the pictures here, uh, which I'm going to see. Uh, I request Omu to help me a little bit uh, here in sharing the trees and. Uh, some of the photographs of uh, the fields wherein uh, we are working with the farmers. People can also see. It's uh, not that one. Yeah, this. Yeah. I don't know if the screen is sharing. It's not working. Yeah, audio. I feel now. No. No, you can see it. Yeah, here you can see uh, how we are doing the thing. Like uh, here you can see my farmers, an old uh, man. He's uh, from the south district of Sikkim. He is an ardent organic lemon grass cultivator. You can see his lands and uh, the saplings ready for distribution to the farmers. We have a, a couple of young guys who are preparing the saplings for other farmers. There are ladies who have a my unit uh, for selling their saplings, which are all organic uh, saplings uh, to be distributed. Okay, it looks like we've got sharing back. So hopefully uh, the internet is is stable from here on out. And thank you all for so much for your patience. Over to you. Thank you. We were we got into problem with uh, the network uh, connection. Uh, once again, I'm back uh, in the session. I was trying to share um, my screen. Actually, I don't know, maybe because of, uh, you know, network problem, the screen setting could not happen. However, the interest uh, people can uh, contact us over our email, uh, wherein we'll be sending by chat, or may also be connected, uh, get connected to us uh, over our WhatsApp, or uh, even in the Facebook uh, page, we'll be sharing the details uh, shortly. So I was uh, talking to, I don't know uh, from where the uh, connection was uh, interrupted. Uh, I hope, uh, who is there? Uh, Vince is there, no? Uh, Vince, uh, can you uh, help me get the last uh, point I was talking about? Hello? Vince?
Yeah, so uh, screen share module. Hmm? Oh, can you know? We are talking about the training of uh, this uh, people, and then you were saying that you, you uh, personally goes and see and train them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking on those topics and how you um, help uh, your training them to convert their fellow lands okay. into. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was talking about uh, uh, training of uh, young farmers. Uh, uh, young farmers uh, who are now engaged in uh, cultivation processing and marketing of uh, aromatic and uh, medicinal plants. Uh, we are growing here uh, crops like uh, lemongrass, jamon, chamomile, uh, vetiver, pacholi, uh, the rosale, hibiscus. And uh, uh, we have uh, set up uh, micro units at the farmer level, uh, uh, at the villages uh, itself, so that uh, farmers uh, find it very convenient uh, to uh, harvest their crops, get it dried uh, at their own fields, and uh, bring it to the processing units uh, for uh, processing of uh, their products. And uh, we get uh, the final uh, products like uh, essential oils, herbal teas, and all. Very young uh, people are now getting connected to us as we made the diversification in the uh, crops. The crops uh, like aromatic and medicinal uh, plants are uh, found very beneficial in uh, many senses. Like uh, these uh, plants, if uh, I take an example of uh, lemongrass, they are uh, immune to attack by wild animals. Rabbit, deer, monkey, nothing touches it. Similar is the case with uh, uh, crops like chamomile. One of the biggest uh, problem uh, the organic farmers in Sikkim are facing as on this day is uh, attacks by wild animals. Of course, we have uh, somehow uh, taken steps to control uh, pests uh, and diseases to a number of measures. But uh, another problem that we are facing is attack by wild animals uh, like monkeys, uh, rabbits, deer, uh, wild boar and all. So when uh, we made a diversification into these crops like aromatic and medicinal, we found uh, these uh, crops immune to attack by these animals. Number one, they are also uh, immune to pest and uh, diseases. They are very easy to cultivate, and there is a good market for organic essential oils and herbal teas. Of course, Sikkim also holds another credit of uh, uh, selling very famous tea, the orthodox tea by the name Temi tea. We also grow. We are also, in fact, uh, the world leaders in cultivation of spices uh, like large cardamom. People uh, call it large cardamom as well as it is also known as black cardamom in the market. We cultivate considerable amounts of spices like ginger, turmeric, uh, ancient grains like millet, buckwheat, and all. And uh, uh, I would like to claim that as on this day, uh, Sikkim is one of the very known sources of these crops, many of the vegetables and spices in the domestic as well as uh, world market. So these are the things uh, I wanted to say very broadly. We'll be sharing our email IDs down here in the chat. People who are interested uh, in getting uh, photographs, other details, PPTs, and all that we had uh, prepared uh, for this, uh, for discussion, uh, for showing in this forum, are with us because of the network problem. Uh, we are uh, facing difficulties in sharing our screen here. We'll be glad if interested uh, people connect uh, to us over our email IDs. 
or even our WhatsApp numbers or in the Facebook page, we'd be very, very glad. Thank you. Here is uh, one question I'd like to answer. How have you managed to get the community involved and turning them away from buying non-organic? Okay, this is uh, one of uh, the wonderful question I was waiting for. See, what happened in uh, Sikkim is, it was, in fact, uh, the mission started uh, uh, from the government's uh, end. The then government of Sikkim had, in the year 2003 itself, declared uh, this in a mission mode, the Sikkim Organic Mission. It was not a mere declaration uh, uh, in uh, terms of, uh, uh, yeah, you know, notices and circulars from the government. The declaration was something like a complete ban of inorganic fertilizers, pesticides, and, uh, you know, people who are farmers who are uh, banned from importing uh, these uh, agricultural inputs in the first step. So uh, the farmers like me, like Omu and Karma, uh, and many other farmers, thousands of uh, farmers uh, took it in a positive way. They stopped the uh, utilization of uh, inorganic uh, inputs in agriculture. So automatically, by default, uh, Sikkim became organic. The organic uh, things uh, like vegetables and grains started coming into the market. Uh, by the, uh, you know, as the time passed, people started focusing on importance of consumption of organic um, uh, uh, grains, vegetables, and all. People uh, knew the benefits of uh, organic uh, uh, agriculture as well as uh, horticultural producers. So it was a sort of, you know, an uh, automatic uh, type of uh, sifting. As on this day, if you come and ask uh, the people of Sikkim, which one do you prefer? The people will give you an obvious answer. I want organic produce. So that was one. The next question was, is I wonder to what extent does today's organic farming in Sikkim differs from the pre-chemical patterns of traditional farming? Has this simply been a return to traditional practice or do you see it as more progressive move? Yeah, there are obvious refinements. There are obvious improvements the way we do farming. Because if I talk about traditional farming, yesterday there were only bulls to plow our fields, but today, we have introduced, we have improvised uh, the methods of farming. Although we have uh, very small lands, we have introduced like hand killer machines. One of the uh, difference uh, you can vividly see. If I talk about manuring, my grandfather used to use only cow dung based manure. And uh, they were, you know, uh, completely unprocessed uh, manure. We have techniques, we have people today who are processing even the manure. They are being uh, the manure, which is uh, produced at the primary level by uh, cows. They are getting improvised and uh, applied in the fields. So there are refinement in the processes. There are improvement in the processes. Uh, uh, the learning and application of new things are going on every day. I'm not claiming that we are perfect. Uh, organic farmers as on this day, we are still learning the processes. But yes, I can claim one thing. We have the farmers like me, Karma, Ongmu and uh, uh, Karma, we have completely stopped, uh, you know, entertaining any sort of organic inputs or organic, uh, uh, you know, uh, things to consume at our personal level at our homes. So that's uh, how I would like to answer the second question. The third question I can uh, see here is what the acres of average farm or small holdings and how do you source and manage inputs? See, as I told Sikkim, the farmers of uh, Sikkim holds a uh, very small uh, uh, lands. They are known for holding uh, small lands. That's why I was uh, referring to small time farmers. Often you will find farmers here uh, holding less than an uh, acre. Uh, mostly, inputs 
mostly we are using we are favoring and we are motivating people to use our own resources the seeds produced by our farmers manure produced uh, by our farmers and uh, wherever there are a uh, little bit of uh, 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 you know uh, shortages we are uh, bringing in from other states from well certified agencies and uh, farmer groups that's how we are uh, sourcing the things how uh, the next question is how serious a threat does the modi government pose to sikkim's organic uh, uh, revolution now uh, i would like to answer it in this way uh, mr modi whenever he visited sikkim whenever i have uh, seen him talking in uh, uh, you know public forums i have seen him uh, uh, you know encouraging people to go organic so i don't think uh, modi ji is a threat to uh, sikkim's organic revolution in fact uh, he, he used the uh, international uh, the success of uh, sikkim's organic uh, mission the success of uh, sikkim's organic revolution i uh, i have found him uh, you know uh, encouraging uh, people to go uh, into organic farming and uh, he often um, uh, motivates uh, people uh, to uh, in the entire northeastern region um, of india to go organic and uh, set a type of model of uh, you know organic uh, farming at the world level now next question i can see here is aside from learning new technical knowledge what kind of mindset changes were seen and how were these encouraged i think i have uh, already answered a part of this question uh, more will come i you know keeping in mind uh, the limitation of uh, time i would i would like to share my email id down there and uh, i request uh, all the concerned people to connect uh, with my group uh, through this email id also now is there a relationship between faith such as hinduism and organic principles and na uh, nature uh, of course uh, this might be related to things uh, like you know vedic farming and all i would like to say uh, i don't know how to answer i can't be uh, you know uh, so i can't uh, uh, link uh, uh farming with a particular religion you know farming itself is a religion for me i can't say uh, i can't say i can't say uh, farming is related to hinduism of course uh, there are principles of vedic farming there are things like permaculture and all uh, which i think uh, the, the time doesn't uh, permit me to discuss in detail so if uh, the concerned person means if uh, he or she Uh, connects uh, to me individually maybe i can uh, give a very good write up uh, to this uh, particular uh, question uh, the relation between hinduism and organic principles and nature of course we all are uh, linked to nature the human uh, race uh, the entire human race is uh, linked to the nature so uh, you know whether you take it uh, as a profession or a religion it is uh, uh, for me it is the uh, same as i said you know not say i would like to say farming itself is a religion for me uh, one more priyat sharing would you share your contact details here yeah. here is zoom meeting okay zoom meeting is here let me click we'll go there Uh, so uh given the uh, time i am very uh, thankful to the team whoever uh, has very successfully conducted uh, uh, this global uh, 22 21 meet through the forum of uh, oxford uh, real farming conference i am personally thankful to the national government of india the state government of sikkim and uh, the biggest uh, thanks to the team orfs global 2021 i'd like to
hand over the chair uh, this to our chair mr chiring ongmu once more so we are coming to an end now and um, so we'll be joining in the zoom meeting to if, answer the queries uh, you answer the queries okay so um now it was a very nice session we enjoyed a lot and uh, i hope um it was a learning a, a good learning session for all of us and uh, we are very pleased and very honored to present our state in such a big platform and um, i wish you all um good evening and um, a good health thank you